So this, this week, um, I was thinking about uh, a particular word. And uh, how many of you here think that you are great multitaskers? Great, right? Now, that's all well and good. And I'm, I'm glad that you think that you are great multitaskers. But I'm willing to admit that I don't think that I'm a good multitasker. And when I look at the science of things and, 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 and the, the latest science studies that have been coming out, more and more and more, Science has been showing that as much as we think that we're good at multitasking, if we compare ourselves when we're doing one task compared to when we're doing multiple tasks, we do one task a lot better than we do a bunch of tasks linked together. But unfortunately, we don't think so. <laughs> and, and probably we see this more often than not, or, or we can get a glimpse of this more often than not, if we just pay attention to texting and driving. And I remember when, I remember when, you know, cell phones really first started getting popular and there were no laws against driving while, being, while talking on your cell phone. And I remember even then, even though there was no law against it at the time, but I remember that there were some close calls. I remember that there were some challenges, some difficulties that came along with talking while you were driving, all right? And so you had that, but then all of a sudden, it wasn't just that you could talk on your cell phones anymore, but now you could do something called texting. And now this was different because at least when you're talking on your phone, you know, you can maneuver things in such a way where you can have your phone up here or you can try to hold it up to your, to your ear with your shoulder while you're driving and looking at the road. But when it comes to texting, texting was a little bit different or texting is a little bit different because texting requires that you look down at your phone, yeah. right? And, so it be, it, and, and, and that can be challenging when you're trying to look at some tiny little letters on a tiny little screen, right? right? But pay attention to the road. Now, how many of you are willing to admit that you do text and drive every now and again? I, I admit it, all right? <laughs> I admit, <laughs> all right? And, and, and even though we understand that it can be dangerous, we have this propensity to continue uh, trying to do two things at once. And what I come to understand is that th the challenge that comes along with texting and driving is a challenge of attention and where your attention lies. And so as I started thinking about this word attention, I realize there are a couple of things that you can, and I've mentioned this before, but there are a couple of things that you, there are about four things that I think that you can spend. And when I think about money, you can spend money, all right? When I think about energy, you can spend energy, all right? When I think about um, uh, 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 time, time can be spent, all right? right? But there's also another phrase that we talk about often when we talk about spending. And, and some of y'all have heard the term, you know, I, I need you to pay attention, right? And the reason why they call it pay attention is because your, your attention is something that can be spent. And most, when you can spend something, usually that means that it's not an unlimited resource, right? And so, and so when you're focused on one thing, that means that your ability to focus on something else is very limited, very limited, right? And so one of the things that... Attention is so important because if you understand, I don't know if anybody in here does any sales or if they've done any marketing, but we've done some. If, if you are, sales and marketing is actually tied into all aspects of our lives, right? A lot of times we don't even realize that we are being sold or marketed to, all right? And even when you talk about uh, 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 evangelism, right, and, and going out and ministering to people, in essence, what you are doing is you are selling and marketing a particular product right? You're trying to make something attractive to somebody because you want them to engage in that thing that you're trying to offer them, correct? And so what I understand, however, is that those who are professional sales and marketing um, agents, what they understand is that if they're going to be successful, they need to understand where people's attention is. Yes. If you understand anything about commercials, why do we have commercials on TV? Because people who uh, people who are over the marketing departments of large companies understand that, that people's attention is on TV. 
And so if I'm going to get you to buy my product, then I need to go to where your attention is, right? But now it's not just on TV. Now we have something called social media. And so now there's a whole brand of marketing that's just simply called social media marketing. Why? Because people are no longer, well, people are still on their TV, but a large audience has shifted from being on television to going to their phones to get their information to going to their apps on their phones to get uh, the, the, the most up-to-date, to, to figure out what are the latest items out there to buy or what have you. So marketers have understood, listen, if we're going to get somebody to um, engage with our product or engage with our service, then we need to go to where their attention is. And their attention now is on their cell phone device, their iPhone, their Android phone, their tablet. Attention. And what I've come to understand is that just because you are somewhere physically doesn't even necessarily mean that your attention is there, right? I think, I, I am what I call, I am a dreamer, right? The challenge that dreamers have is that we live in our heads a lot, right? And so I remember even growing up, I can remember even specifically a time in second grade in Miss Rand's class in Brooklyn, New York, right? I was sitting at PS 113 and and she's teaching the class, and I have no idea what she was teaching that day. Why? Because I was just absorbed in my thoughts. And what I realized, even at that young age, is that one of the things, I, like, I can be somewhere, but I can be so absorbed in my thoughts that I have no idea what's going on around me. <laughs> right? Now, there's some advantages to that in some ways, but there are often times where that has become challenge, challenging also. Right? Attention, attention. Right. And the, 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 the reason why I'm even bringing up this concept of attention, because, you know, uh, you all kind of know where I'm going with this, is that one thing that I've come to realize is that life is better when our attention is on Christ. And as a matter of fact, what what Christ has asked of us is that our attention would be on him. And, and throughout the Bible, I believe that what he's doing is he's saying, listen, stop focusing on everything else that is around you, right? There are even some good things around you that you're focused on, but I need you to be solely focused on me, right? And as a matter of fact, it's crazy because I was thinking about this when I was on my way here in the car, and the thought dawned on me that when I was in college, even though I probably should have been a little more focused on my schoolwork, my attention was heavily focused on Christ. And, 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 and what's interesting is that even though I didn't necessarily get, I, I, of course I graduated, y'all know the story, I graduated, but even though I didn't get the grades that I want, it's amazing now that I think about it that I graduated but didn't have to worry about paying back any debt, right? I graduated and, and I was in a position to where when I was working, even if I was working a job that was just $10 an hour, all the money that I was making was coming back to me, yeah. right? And as soon as I took my attention off of Christ and started thinking about what, it should, what my professional life should look like, when I started paying more attention to other people who were in jobs that seemed a little bit more prestigious, all of a sudden a, a turnaround happened and I found myself in debt. Right. And so what I've come to understand is that is that the, the challenge that we have sometimes is that our attention is not on Christ. We turn our attention to other things and all of a sudden we find our situations a little bit worse than it was before. We find our, ourselves enslaved to something else when God has said, I'm trying to make you free. And so all of a sudden we get to this this particular um, um, book and the, these particular verses in the book of Exodus. And we all know pretty much what's going on in the book of Exodus. There have been a people who, who were a chosen people, right, who were living in this land of Egypt, but they were chosen by God. They were called Israel. And all of a sudden they found themselves in a sticky situation. They were prospering in the land of Israel, but for some reason uh, uh, one of the pharaohs got upset with them, up, upset, kind of got jealous at their prosperity. And so what he decided to do was to enslave them. And they had been enslaved for roughly 400 years. And, 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 and I've talked to, to y'all about this before. Slavery can leave you with some challenges. 
Slavery can leave you even when, you're, when you've left slavery, and we see it again, we see it again in our society today. When, you're, when your people have been enslaved for hundreds of years, there's still an... And it says that, and this is the message version, it says, God spoke all these words. I am God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a life of slavery. No other gods, only me. Right. King James Version would say, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And what, what, what I, I was as I've come to, you know, as I've come to understand and, 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 and as I've been just paying attention to that verse, what I've come to realize is that God starts off the, this, 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 this uh, in Exodus chapter 20, we have the Ten Commandments or what we call the Ten Commandments. Right. And the first thing that God does is that he talks to us about the relationship that he has with us. And I thought it was so amazing because if you pay attention, God says that before I even gave you a bunch of rules, I have actually done the dirty work of saving you. You were slaves. Before, before I gave you rules and before you even understood any rules that I was going to give you, before you even understood uh, 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 this list of uh, laws that, I, that I'm about to give you, what I want you to understand is that I have already made you free. Yeah. Amen. I've already made you free. And, 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 and I've separated you from bondage. I've taken you away from the taskmasters that you've had. And, 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 and watch this. Based on that relationship, based on the relationship that you have, the first and foremost thing that I want from you, I'm not even asking you to do or commit an action as yet. I'm not asking you to do anything. The first and foremost thing that I want from you is your full attention. Right? So I, I don't want you to, I don't want to have to share your attention with other gods. Right? I, I, I don't want you to get distracted with, with, this, with, with these false gods that you have here and there and these things that are, that, are tempt, that are tempting you to look away from me. I want your full attention. And some of the challenges that I believe that we have in our lives today, it, 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 it's, it's because we have forgotten to just have our full attention on Christ. And I've really been wrestling with that thing and I've really been making sure uh, to get back to to God, listen, if, if I don't know anything else, what I do know I can do is have my full attention on you. And I'm challenging you this morning that if you don't, if you can't do anything else, if you forget anything else, just 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 concentrate your full attention day in and day out on Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you that 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 if because something maybe the Bible is a little bit too deep for you. Right. But but to have your attention fully on Christ isn't too deep for you to do. And I believe that God will start making things clear for you if you keep your eyes on him. And so what I've, what I've come to understand and, and, and why God is doing this is because what, what I've realized is that wherever your focus is or whatever you focus on, you are a slave to that thing. And so, and so if your focus is on money, and I'm, I'm, I'm even stealing some of my thunder here, but, but there's a verse that says that, that you know, you can't serve both God and mammon. So, so you have to choose one thing that you're going to focus on. Why? Because if you're focused on mammon, if you're focused on money, you're going to be a slave to money. If your focus is on Christ, then you'll be a slave to Christ. But it's weird because Christ is like, those who become slaves to me, I actually make them free. But everything else that you become a slave to, you're actually in bondage. Christ is the only one that says that when you become a slave to me, I make you free. I take your I am the only uh, master that when you come to me, I actually take your burdens away from you. And I do all the dirty work so that you can leverage that and be free. Amen. Your attention. Where is your attention? And so the challenge is so. So what I'm what I'm admonishing us to do, of course, is to become slaves <laughs> to the love of Christ, right? And so we understand that the Ten Commandments were given as an expression of love. And so, and so, and so what I'm trying to get us to do and what I'm trying to get myself to do, and I believe what Christ wants us to do, is become slaves to what 
true love is. To what true love is. Now, here's the challenge. The challenge that we have is that if we're real about it, life comes with some distractions. Life comes with, can some, anybody name some distractions for me? <laughs> have mercy. Cell phones, absolutely. Right? Everybody distracted with their cell phones nowadays, right? As a matter of fact, we, we go to our cell phones on purpose. When we feel uncomfortable, we go to the cell phone. We find ourselves in a situation where we don't know anybody around, we go to the cell phone, right? We're bored, we go to the cell phone, all right? So we got cell phones can be distracting, relationships can be distracting, right? Um, 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 uh, job, TV, television, entertainment can be distracting, right? Right? Work can be distracting, right? Some good things even can be distractions, right? And so, and so even if we talk about the election, right, the presidential candidates can be a distraction. What's going on in the news, world events, right, can be a distraction. The social injustices that we see going on today, those can be distractions, correct? Say that again. Your peers can be distractions, right? And, and, and watch this. There's sometimes that there are positive peer pressures, right? So we understand a lot about negative peer pressure. But there's sometimes that positive peer pressure can be a distraction because sometimes somebody might be trying to get, help you to help get the best out of you and they might be pushing you down a particular path and you're not sure if that's the path that God wants you to go. And they mean well. They mean well. They, they're not giving you anything. They're not telling you anything bad. But you're not sure if God would have that thing for you right here in this moment. And that can be a distraction. And so it reminds me even of the story of... of of um, Peter. And here we have Peter who is walking out on the water, right? The Lord invites him and says, listen, Peter. Uh, Peter's like, Lord, if, if that's you, bid me to come out on water. And Peter starts off with his focus on who? Focus on Jesus, right? But then all of a sudden, what begins to happen? A storm begins to arise, right? The way the, 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 the wind start getting a little bit more catastrophic, the, 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 the ocean, the water starts getting a little bit more tor turmoil in there. Right. And so all of a sudden what happens? He takes his focus. He takes his attention. Let's use the word attention off of who? Right. Off of Jesus and then begins focusing on what? The storm. the storm. And it's amazing because we focus on the storms. As if when we focus on the storms and when we focus on the wind and if we focus on the waves, it's like we're focused on it, expecting that our focus on it will help us to begin walking on water again. Right. As if we're trying to figure out our own strategy as to how to walk on water. And Jesus is like, well, well, I'm the one that when you were focused on me, I'm the one that caused you to walk on water. And as soon as you took your eye off of me and you started focusing on the storm, all of a sudden you started doing nothing but sinking. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to talk from a real place. But I've understood and I've seen how, how sinking works. I've, I've, I've seen that sinking, sinking begins to arise because my focus is not on Christ. And I believe that, that if our focus is on Christ, if anything that Christ ever touched was blessed. Right. Like, like we if, if we serve a God who does not fail, but we find ourselves sinking, then that must mean there's a problem in our attention. Because I've never seen where somebody's focus was on Christ and they were sinking. Right. Doesn't mean that they didn't have trials. Doesn't mean that they didn't have tribulations, but they weren't sinking, though. Right. Doesn't mean that. Right. Because Peter, if we understand Peter, Peter, while although he was walking on water, there still was a storm around. He still was going through the storm, but the storm, but the storm couldn't sink him. The only thing that was sinking him was the fact that he took his attention off of Christ. And I believe I believe that God was trying to tell the children of Israel that, listen, you are going to be tempted. As a matter of fact, it happened pretty immediately. Right. As soon as he as soon as Moses was up there getting the getting the Lord, they started focusing on other gods. Right. right? They started building images of, of what they thought God should look like. Right. And started taking their eye off of the God that had just saved them and started focusing on on, on other things. Right. And so I believe that th that the reason why God said that, listen, the first out of out of all these 10 main rules that I'm about to give you, 
I, if you can watch this, you can you can try to obey. You can try to you can actually go about life and not lie. You can go about life and be respectful to your parents. But if you do all those things, but don't keep your eye on me, you're going to find areas in your life where you're sinking. And as a matter of fact, you'll find yourself just going through the motions when it comes to those things, but never really being able to develop a relationship with me. One of the challenges that we have sometimes in relationships, yeah, and, 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 and ladies, you can let me know, but I don't know if any of the ladies in here have ever been talking to their, their, their husband or their boyfriend and felt like, okay, I'm talking to you, but I don't think that you're really like present with me right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> right. And trust me, I've been guilty of that, like I told you all many times. Right. And, and, and I believe that one of the most frustrating things in relationships is when you're talking to somebody, but you can see that they're not really present with you. And I, and I believe and, and watch this. You can do the dishes if you want to. You can do the chores for your parents if you want to. You can uh, you can uh, uh, cut the grass. Right. You can do laundry. Um, you can go out there and, and make a whole lot of money. But if when somebody if when the person that you're doing those things for, if when you're communicating with them, they don't feel like you're present with them, they could care less about all the other stuff. And so basically, my sermon today is simply that that that. Listen, God appreciates, I'm sure, all the things that you're doing on his behalf. Right. Right. But 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 don't get to the point where you're casting out demons in his name. You're, you're doing all these great things in the name of God, but God still says that, listen, I never knew you. Why? Because we, you were not present with me when I was trying to communicate with you. Because, because I did, while you were doing those things, you were doing those things, but still never gave me your undivided attention. And so, and so it's, it's as simple as that. I, I, I had no intention. As a matter of fact, I intentionally planned on not keeping you guys here with a long sermon today. Focus your full attention on Jesus. I love this verse here, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It says, summing, this is the message version, summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true, things that are noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise and not things to curse. Right. Let me I'm going to go to the to the King James Version and read it from the King James Version also. I'm at Philippians chapter four and verse eight it says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, watch this, watch this. It says think on these things, but we can even say give these things your attention. Give these things your attention. Why? Because those are the type of things that if you're going to be a slave to anything, be a slave to honesty. Be a, be a slave to things that are pure. Be a slave to things that are of virtue. Be a slave to things that are, are lovely and, and are praiseworthy, right? Be a slave to things that, 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 that will manifest or, or perpetuate Christ's love in our hearts and in the hearts of the people that we are connected to.